yes, on your account, it's written Marina. Maybe we should write Mina because sure. people can. Uh -huh. yes. Okay, very good. Okay, so 6 p.m. in Ottawa, in Montreal, and 8 a.m. in Yakutsk, and we made it. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, uh, so maybe let's keep your microphones off right now, those who are not speaking. Uh, you will see interpretation uh, function, it's where the globe is. Uh, русскоговорящие участники, посмотрите, есть глобус, вы там можете выбрать для себя функцию перевода. У нас работают uh, два переводчика. Okay, пожалуйста, держите свои микрофоны выключенными для uh, лучшей, uh, лучшей связи. Okay, we start. Uh, mesdames et messieurs, дамы и господа, ladies and gentlemen, nous sommes réunis aujourd'hui avec un mandat, un objectif et un programme très important. We got together today with a very important mandate, a goal and agenda. En plus de soutenir pendant des années les relations bilatérales entre le Canada et les pays eurasiens dans des secteurs tels que l'aviation, la construction, la métallurgie, l'exploitation minière et l'agriculture, depuis l'année dernière, l'Association canadienne pour le développement des affaires en Eurasie et Russie est sur la bonne voie pour assister également les PME des secteurs B2C. Et aujourd'hui, nous soulignerons les réalisations d'entreprises basées au Canada et en Russie qui façonnent l'industrie de la mode. Nous échangerons sur les pratiques de développement durable des affaires et explorerons les possibilités de collaboration. Nous aborderons également la façon dont l'industrie de la fourrure naturelle supporte les économies de peuples peuple du Nord. That was my part in French because this chapter of uh, the association is based in Montreal and uh, we are not forgetting this important language as well. So now time to speak in English. So besides for years supporting bilateral relations between Canada and Eurasian countries in such sectors as aviation, construction, metallurgy, mining and agriculture from last year on and on, you see our association is now like set on track to assist the SMEs from B2C sectors as well. And today we will be acknowledging the achievements of Canadian uh, and Eurasian companies that shape the fashion industry. We will be exchanging with business development practices and exploring opportunities for collaboration. We will also be touching base of how natural fur industry shapes the northern people's economies. Uh, let me uh, show you our program. It's just the, the slide. You, you have all this program on hand. So we have uh, five panels. We will introduce each other at the uh, first, uh, during the first panel. Uh, in panel two, we will be speaking about fashion industry trends, regulations applied and uh, sustainability, which is in fact our main topic uh, of today's conversation. Um, the pa panel three will be devoted to marketing. As you can see here, customers marketing, pricing and competitive advantages of companies. In panel four, uh, we'll touch base on research and development if companies do and exchange with in, uh, import and export strategies. In panel five, technology and human resources strategies. And at the end, we will exchange with proposals for collaboration. So I would uh, maybe underline that we are not going to make presentations here. The format is uh, a discussion. So we really want to give it um, a smooth flow, I would say, and uh, yeah, to, to achieve more in, in this format. Okay, uh, as for technical uh, instructions, so please keep your microphones off and uh, when you are invited, yeah, you can turn it on. Okay, and I see Carol is also with us. So we have two moderators, myself, Marina Bielski, the regional director of Serba in Montreal and Ottawa, and Ksenia Agloblina, who is assisting the association with a new project, uh, Serba Virtual Trade Fair. And let me introduce to you our sponsor of the event. This is Saha Bult Company from Yikutia. We have with us uh, Maxime, who is the uh, general director or chief executive officer, 
of soccer boots. Yes, and uh, you can see right near him, uh, Nikolai Stepanov, who is uh, responsible for international business development. Uh, so let me uh, give them uh, a few words to say and uh, yes, to acknowledge the sponsorship and this intention to, to support bilateral relations between the countries on the sustainable development uh, subject. Okay, so the floor is yours, Maxim and Nikolai. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Yes, we hear you. We listen to us, Maxim. Uh -huh. uh, we're very happy that you created this format, and we're very interested in the Canadian market. And we wanted to now present our organization, Sahabot and Pushna Yakuti. Uh, Saha Bult is an agro-industrial company, the largest light industry company in Yakutia, and the only enterprise in Russia that has the ability to perform a full production cycle from raw material extraction to processing and then a finished product. The company specializes in processing of leather and fur and production of products made from leather and fur. The uninterrupted supply is entered by full-time hunter, fishermen and livestock farmers all year around. Most of the company's products are hats and footwear, as well as souvenirs and traditional art products. The skins of northern animals are unique in texture, color and consistency. This is due to our extreme local climate conditions where temperatures can dip below minus 60 degrees Celsius in winter and rise to plus 40 degrees Celsius in summer. The same skin protects them in summer and winter by extreme thermoregulation mechanisms and adaptations. This makes the raw materials available to Sahabult unique in quality. Soft, warm, comfortable and beautiful footwear and leather products are the choice of everyone from toddlers to the elderly. The bright colors and lightweight pleases kids. The simplicity and ease of use their parents. The modern design and creativity in styling pleases young people. Sticking to tradition and comfort give peace of mind to their grandparents. By using age-old traditions and utilizing raw products from our homeland, we are making sure that Sahabult is part of the future and the future will be part of Sahabult. Марина, как? Да. Нормально? Да, хорошо, продолжайте. Еще хотелось бы сказать, что чтобы наша конференция да, какую-то плодотворную работу провела, и мы двигались дальше по отношению к продаже наших изделий и, или каких-нибудь... До этого говорилось, что с Канады тоже какую-нибудь тоже продукцию в том же отношении вот, с аукционной продукцией хотелось бы приобрести. Ну, вам и нам, так скажем. И дальше хочется сказать, что ну, напрямую да, будем разговаривать с нашими участниками. Или, или как там будет, Марина? Да, у вас есть программа на руках. Мы будем идти по программе, по пяти панелям. И в конце будем разговаривать с магазинами и с дистрибьюторами. Да. А, ну, сейчас я а, тогда а, начнем, да, тогда? Кому? А, да, конечно, начинаем. Если что-то вы еще представите о тогда Сахабулке, и мы дадим каждой другой компании представиться. В нашем первом вопросе представить компанию, организационную структуру, управление, продукция, услуги, если оказываются. А, ну, как вы видели, наша компания – это национальная компания, она стопроцентно является государственным предприятием, и 
мы производим то, что у нас добывается, то, что мы у нас в нашем владении находится где-то 22 миллионов гектара земли охотничьих угодий. С них мы со всеми охотниками работаем. И они для нас заготавливают пушкины как соболь, белку, там, там, андатру и другие там, живности, которые у нас находятся. И, соответственно, мы в нашем своем организации перерабатываем их, обработку делаем, и в дальнейшем мы делаем изделия, которые вы видели в роде. Соответственно, у нас очень много, ну, как бы, организация существует уже 30 лет, и есть своя история, ну, свои наработки, своя технология, и поэтому на качество и на, на продукцию свою мы все равно очень как бы, отвечаем, что они, ну, мы понимаем, что она является специфичной и хотели понять канадскую вот контингент, как смотрит на них, на нашу продукцию. И мы можем, в принципе, все подстраивать под Канаду или какую-нибудь другую страну, чтобы наша продукция не только у нас реализовалась, но и в другие страны. Все замечательно. Мы тогда идем, представляем дальше всех наших других производителей. Okay, now let me introduce to you for Canada, Kanye Industries Inc. So it's a Canadian company based in Nanaimo Island. And we have with us Kelvin Kanye, the president, and also Roy Jones. Uh, so Fur Canada is a world-class Canadian fur manufacturing company operating since 1999. The company produces premium quality and the finest quality fur and taxidermist products. Uh, so uh, Kelvin and Roy, the floor is yours. Kelvin, your microphone, turn it on, please. Uh, thank you, Marina. Um, and good morning to you folks in uh, Irkutsk. It's uh, early morning for you. Um, we are here on the West Coast. It's uh, Nanaimo on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. And um, so we're on the West Coast. Uh, my partner in, uh, on the panel is Chief Roy Jones from Haida Gwaii First Nations, also on the West Coast of British Columbia. And uh, we, as a company, we work very closely with uh, First Nations here on the, in British Columbia and the Yukon. And uh, we, we are putting some projects together, namely uh, the seals and uh, other items on the, uh, on the West Coast um, so that we could uh, purchase them and manufacture them. We are fur manufacturers, so we manufacture home decor items, uh, garments, a small collection of garments, and uh, taxidermy items, which are also uh, from museums and home decor. Uh, those are the main items that we manufacture. And uh, we have one facility here in Nanaimo. We have a master furrier from um, Greece who is our, runs that department. And um, as well as uh, our other fellow that works with us uh, and helps us along is Professor Vasilis Cardassus from the Royal College of Art in uh, London, England. And he's our innovator and uh, designer and so, so on and so forth. So uh, that's it. We've. Uh, We're, we've been we've been located in Nanaimo, British Columbia, for the last 20 years, and uh, we have a small company, and uh, we um, try and get out the products that we manufacture. Okay, very good. So we have many other panels, and this is just uh, the first introduction where companies make introduction. We have another indigenous company here from Australia with us. So let me introduce to you Leandra uh, Swim. And we have Leandra with us, the founder. And a few words uh, uh, to introduce the company. Leandra Swim allows a unique and innovative way to engage with Aboriginal Australian culture. Leandra Swimwear is on trend and of premium quality. The swimwear is made of ecological fabrics and packaging. Leandra, please go ahead and uh, introduce the company yourself. 
Yeah, thank you um, so much for having me. I, I must admit, I'm a, a little bit nervous. It's, you know, you're all from all different corners of <laughs> the world, it would seem. So thank you so much uh, for having me and allowing me to share more about, um, I guess, my culture and the way that I celebrate that uh, through my label, Leandra Swim. Um, we are, I guess, a little bit maybe different um, in that the Australian, I guess, fashion and particularly First Nations industry, um, a lot of primarily outsource our manufacturing and work closely with manufacturers to, um, to, to make our products. I, um, we are known for our signature prints, which I hand draw and are um, inspired by my Aboriginal culture. I'm a Yunga woman from Northeast Arnhem Land, which is um, a very remote place in the Northern Territory, um, far away from runways and um, <laughs> beautiful fabrics and clothing. But um, for us, we are, uh, that that is our kind of place that we like to be, where we like to kind of merge these two worlds of beautiful fabulousness and um, what it means to be a First Nations person um, with a rich culture and language and traditions in Australia. So we uh, primarily do swimwear. That is our, you know, main focus. But we are starting now to dabble in uh, some resort wear pieces and um, expand our collection. Each of our collections are limited um, editions and are very uh, quick selling and, and hot pieces of, you know, collectibles, I guess. We kind of take the idea of art being on the wall and put that on our swimwear and having that, you know, the body becomes our canvas, um, which is always kind of the, the place that we come from. Um, at a more grassroots level, we have a main focus of celebrating uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women, so First Nations women in Australia, and we share their stories through naming each of our pieces after these amazing women. Um, and a card goes out about the collection uh, theme, also about what the prints represent, uh, and as well a short bio about the um, amazing woman that inspired that particular piece. That's so true. that is us in a nutshell. Yeah, that's enough for the first panel, very good. Uh, and now Xenia. Xenia is also moderating the events and Xenia will be presenting our other manufacturers, Xenia. The floor is yours, Xenia. Hi, Marina. Hi, everyone. Nice to see everyone here. Mm -hmm. um, so the first company that, um, that I'll present is Brave Souls. Um, so Brave Souls is a company based in Canada and the Dominican Republic, focused on conscious fashion. They focus on providing their consumers with a combination of ethical fashion choices and beautiful style. The items they produce are made from used tires that would otherwise be in landfills. Um, they also used upcycled leather um, from remnants of furniture and airplane seats and have various other practices and materials that are sustainability focused. So from Brave Souls, we have uh, Crystal Earl. She's the founder and CEO. Crystal, over to you. Hi there. Um, so good to be here and so wonderful to hear about all the different great things that are happening around the world. I, uh, Brave Souls is four years old. I launched, <clears throat> uh, I launched Brave Souls in 2017 um, and it was born out of a couple things but in particular out of my work I work very closely with landfill workers in different parts of the world but in particular um, in Dominican Republic and I saw that when things are reaching things when you work in the landfill you start to realize that things reach their end of life much sooner than they reach their end of use and so that got me thinking about what could I do to um, generate enterprise and to in tie my my love of fashion and um, my love of classic fashion into um, something that would be that would work in an e-commerce setting and that would would have um, would be part of what is really more of a circular model and so that's really what we're focused on um, is around keeping things in our products as everything as circular as possible in terms of the materials that we're using as you were saying Senya and yeah, and so we are primarily, we ship all over the world. So being e-commerce lends itself to that, but about 50% of our business is in Canada and the other 50% is around the world. Okay. 
Thank you, Crystal. Um, the next company that, uh, that we have is Starlight Furs. Um, so Starlight Furs is a company based in Montreal, which produces women's and men's apparel, uh, as well as home decor. Uh, the items they produce are modern in style, made from furs, including fox, raccoon, beaver, lynx, and mink. Uh, the fur used in all of their products comes from the North American Fur Association, and all of their products are made here in Canada. They have also formed a partnership to encourage youth to live more sustainably. And we have Pablo Lucas, founder and CEO from, uh, from Starlight Furs. Thank you, Pablo. You have your video on, so please speak. Pablo's microphone. Good morning to everybody. Hello to others what is next to us. That's a mink with a head. The heads of the mink. Elena is the model. That's a mink also, vest with leather. That's our design. Not sable. That's all the pieces from the sables. It's not skins. It's created by Pavlos. All the pieces is created by me. That's beaver with Shwakara inserts inside. That's a different piece. It doesn't show it's black. That's a beaver mixed with the heads of the lynx. It's another texture. That's beaver and with the, the, the long haired uh, fox and with leather inserts. That's a mink jacket with sheer beaver uh, texture inside. That's sheer, no, that's a beaver with long haired fox and with. Uh, stripe leather in, inside. That's the chinchilla, bolero. And that's a, another fox, that's a fox with a raccoon in, inserts, a raccoon, not other fur. It's completely different texture inside, 56 inches long. That's our company, Starlight Fur. That's our company, Starlight Fur. It started by me in 1982 till today. Thank you. And good okay. luck to all of us. Yeah, great introduction. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you. Can I ask you? Marina. Yes, yes, please. Maxim? Marina. Да, Максим. Да, я хочу вас. спросить, да. вот э, э, леса откуда с зверофермы, да, или, или как там у них происходит все это? Они э, это все канадское производство или 
часть Америки там откуда? Uh -huh. Павел, yeah, did you hear the question? Павел? Мы хотели узнать, много ли производится таких изделий у вас? Да, Павел, если вы Yes, your microphone. Yes. Yes, I didn't hear it good. You can explain to me. Yeah, Maxim, повторите тогда. Pavlos, can you turn on your translation, please? Translation button in English. There is a globe. Uh -huh. You can see globe uh -huh. on the menu. Just turn it on English. You can choose Russian or English. And this is how you will be communicating with uh, Yakutia. Okay. You found it? No, I didn't find it. A globe. Okay, I will translate it uh, for now. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, slowly, Maxim. I'm not ready to do that. Okay, I will try. <laughs> Maxim, slowly. Я хотел спросить, вот изделие, которые вы сделали, да, очень понравилось. Yeah, they like Oma... very much the, the quotes. Очень подходит нашему климату. Yeah, it's very suitable for the climate in Yakutia. Потому что у нас очень холодно, сами знаете, 40 As you know, very cold. Minus. И хотели узнать, много делают или вот насчет лисы, да, вот серебристо черная лиса. Are you making a lot of those coats and uh, the fox? Okay, Maxim. Yes, the, the fox is for 40 below zero. The fox, even the even the beavers, the beavers with the with the lynx, it's also it's for below zero because it's the the Montreal with the erosion, it's same climb, it's not a big different. It's for below zero here. It's for below zero there. Okay. It's same thing. Russians and the 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 Canadian here, especially in Quebec in Montreal, it's cold. Mm -hmm. So it's heavy fur. Okay, was it uh, the day fur? Did you buy it in Canada? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, the fur, all the furs is coming from Canada and United States. And United States. Okay, good. Um, yeah, we go next. There will be more questions then. Xenia, we introduced the Thank other. you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we have Wuxley. Wuxley is a company based in Toronto, creating animal-free and sustainable parkas manufactured in Canada. Their focus is on tech-based installation materials delivering warmth. Their materials include mostly post-consumer recycled water-resistant polyester insulation, materials with plant-based ingredients, and biodegradable fabric. They also place a large focus on achieving high social performance in addition to environmental. And from Wuxley, we have uh, Claudia Vasquez, Business Development Manager. Claudia? Is Claudia with us? No, I think she was uh, right at the very beginning. Okay, well, I don't see her now unless she is under the other name. Just uh, quickly checking the names of participants. Claudia, are you with us? Okay, I don't see you, Xenia. Yeah, okay, so then we go on and uh, for panel two. So in the panel two, we are speaking about uh, fashion industry trends, regulations, applied and sustainability. And this time, I would like to invite to speak Calvin, Kanye first and Roy Jones. So we are, uh, Xenia, I think I'm doing your part. Huh? So please, please continue. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to list a few of the, the questions for everyone. Uh, some people probably don't, uh, don't know the list that we've provided to everyone. So um, we would just like a conversation about current trends of, of the international market, the market of any countries, particular countries or provinces or indigenous companies in particular. Is there any uh, government support you can speak of which helps sustain art artisanal practices? Uh, what sustainable development approaches are implemented by your company? Reasons for uh, increasing demand for slower fast fashion and the future of the industry sustainability? 
how the company is managing competitive pressures from low price foreign imports, what steps is the company taking to better compete for businesses of large retailers, how the company is capitalizing on speed to market, opportunities that you see in producing expensive specialty apparel, uh, how the company has been pivoting towards more sustainable products, and what is the company doing to cut overproduction and or lower the carbon imprint of the industry. So first, uh, I'll be calling on Indigenous companies to answer questions about government support in particular. Roy, could you speak to uh, trends maybe and uh, government support for Indigenous companies either in BC or in Canada? Here we go. Oh, yep, I got it now. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, my name is Chief Roy Jones. I'm uh, Chief of the Kailas, the Kigui clan of uh, Tanu. And um, uh, I, in, as of November, I, it was 40 years working to try to get the seal hunt going on the west coast of British Columbia, uh, Canada, and in the United States. Um, it, every time that we try to, we've gained ground with Department of uh, Fisheries and Oceans to uh, try to get the seal hunt going, they change the players and we wind up going back. But um, there's a lot of programs now for uh, uh, education around trapping and uh, development of furs, uh, our work with um, Kelvin at uh, Fur Canada has been real valuable because they're running the training program for working on furs now. It's 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 been a real asset to it. It will be an asset to the communities as we move forward now, and we still have to find funding for that. But um, right now we're really close. On the seventh of August, we met with fifteen senators on the Columbia River and uh, about the seal and seal line and all our water systems are in trouble. So we're really looking to see that seal uh, becomes part of the fur industry. Through the years and through the 40 years that I've been at this, I worked with the Fur Institute of Canada, Fur Canada, I've been in Newfoundland, Ottawa, uh, working with Kelvin in Vancouver and I've done workshops on the value of harvesting versus a cull versus using a cull throughout British Columbia and in many areas in the United States. Um, we've been successful where the government in the United States has put up $980,000 for um, uh, removing problem seals below the uh, Bonneville Dam on the Columbia River and other uh, regions where they're heavily impacted. But with the First Nations, the American Indians being sovereign, uh, these guys have, um, these guys have, uh, um, they're sovereign in the United States. So the government doesn't challenge them too much. Uh, they're actually doing a call in one of the rivers on the west coast of uh, um, Washington State, and we see that as a waste when the, when the value is there because with our marketing uh, programs that we set up with the Chinese, which are ready to go, uh, there isn't a thing of the seal that they don't waste. They use the intestine. The other thing that we're working with, we're working with a scientific company in um, Philadelphia, and we'll be sending them fetus uh, uh, heads of seals, as well as uh, pup seals this year. And what they plan to do is take the genes out of the brain and they can put them back into the human body. And, and I don't know how they do it, but they say it stops and even slows down uh, Alzheimer's disease in the human being. Now, the other part of this uh, health factors in 1994, I did studies of omega-3 fatty acids. I, my first book I read was Healing the Hyperactive Mind uh, by Dr. Nanaimo, uh, Dr. Michael Line in Nanaimo. 
and it talked about omega-3 fatty acids, and I started studying that. In 2002, we're having dinner, and my wife said, how long have you been talking about omega-3s? And I said, for seven years now, and she said, it's just start hitting TV. But when I went through a burnout in 08, when I, I lost a considerable amount of money in the collapse, being over-invested, but when I quit, I had 31 Parkinson's patients that weren't shaking anymore. Uh, people with arthritis, Lyme disease, we're all going back to work. So there's great value when, in the byproducts of harvesting seals other than the furs. So uh, it's good for psoriasis. Um, I, I wore glasses from 15 to 51, and I just started wearing reading glasses now so I could see my computer but the rest of my vision's good, but, and that's probably, that's where we're at now. And we're working really hard. We're an associated company, Pacific Balance Marine Management Corporation that's run out of here. And my president lives in Washington state, who is Thomas Seaweed and we're working pretty hard at it. And is that good enough? <laughs> good yeah, thank you. That's sweet. We also have a, a follow-up question for you and maybe part of that question Calvin can answer. And I think the, the latter part would probably be for you, Chief Roy. Um, so can you speak to reasons for increasing demands for slow fashion and the role that natural indigenous produced fur can play in, in this, in more sustainable, I guess. Um... Could you repeat the question? I didn't quite hear it. Sure. Um, so can you speak to the reasons for, for increasing demands for slow fashion and the role that natural indigenous produced fur can play in this? Okay, sure. We, uh, we actually call fur the honest fabric, because it's the truest, honest fabric that's out there. It's been there since the beginning of time, and man has used that. That's why we call it the honest fabric. Um, well, first of all, I mean, Roy didn't mention that why they're, why they're harvesting seals. Well, they're harvesting seals sustainably are going to be harvesting because there's too many of them, and the salmon population is, is, is dying because of that is being over, overeaten. So, um, because uh, the fishing is, is not great on the West Coast as far as, uh, you know, so it's not overcatching a, over a fish, um, but it's mainly seals. So there's a sustainable harvest has to happen in order to uh, save the West Coast salmon. Um, and why, uh, why are we using fur? Because it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a product that's renew, uh, renewable. It's a product that's, um, manageable because we have um, some of the strictest laws in the world when it comes to wildlife management. So uh, trappers, fur trappers in, the, in Canada, indigenous and non-indigenous uh, harvest the surplus. Uh, many of them have a quota on some of the areas that they trap um, because most of the furs we use are wild furs. We do use some ranch race furs, but most of it is wild because they're, we support indig indigenous fur trappers and, and non-indigenous trappers. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's, it is about sustainability. It's about the heritage. It's about keeping the people, the indigenous people on the land and close to the land. So, um, you know, every, every species that's gone extinct in North America, there's not too many, has all happened since the white settlers arrived on the, on the East Coast. It's never happened when indigenous First Nations were in charge. And, and running and, and operating the, the fur industry. My friend Roy has, um, has tells the story that the fur trade that doesn't go back hundreds of years, it goes back to ancient times because there was a fur trade here long before white settlers arrived on the East Coast of Canada. So um, um, does that answer your question about sustainability and fashions and... Um... Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Good. Do you have anything else to, to add maybe about the culture or if not, we can move Well, on. Roy can probably speak to that, that, that fact. I mean, we, uh, as, a, as a company, we use wild fur and we use seal and we use leather, of course, as well to uh, insert leather into the fur. Um, so, any, I, you know, I'm preaching to the crowd here when it comes to fur. I mean, it's all renewable, it's all sustainable and it's all... Um, biodegradable you know anything else that's on the market is not biodegradable you know when you throw a fur coat in the landfill and it's, it is done in five years and there's nothing left or less 
if you throw a, a Gore-Tex or a, you know another type, type of fabric in this landfill that's there 100 years from now. So that's why we call it the honest fabric. Right. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, we, yeah we, we have to speed up a bit, huh? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay, sorry, yeah. Marina, can you Yes, please ask your question. And everybody use the glow Marina. for translation. Пожалуйста, Максим, вопросы? Давайте. Я хотел спросить, могу ли они продать тюлени и мен, да, выделанные, если не, сколько это будет стоить? И вот Кельвин Кани, он использует олени шкуры, олени мех в своем производстве. Okay. Вот это хотел узнать. Кельвин, okay. there was a question to you. Did you get it? Something about reindeer? Yes. Do you use it uh, in your in manufacturing? Well, um, we don't use reindeer in manufacturing so much as um, we would use it for home decor, a home decor item as a, as a throw item on the floor. But we don't manufacture anything out of reindeer or ours would be called caribou. Okay. And I think there was a question also about steel, but I think that was covered earlier. If you could speak maybe two seconds about that. Can you sell your seal to Russia? Russia is interested to buy seal from you, Sakabult. Would you sell it? Would we sell which? Seal. Seals, yes. Yeah. Well, we, uh, the federal government here on the West Coast has deemed that 19,000, I believe it is Roy, Roy can correct me, uh, seals have to come out of the, out of the, off the West Coast annually out of the rivers in order to save the salmon. So. We've uh, we've got a few of the seal skids back from the tannery, and I can tell you they're probably the Cadillac of all seals in Canada. They're better than the harp seal on the east coast, and unfortunately, they're better than the Arctic seals, the ring seals out of the Arctic. They're very soft and plush and thick. So yes, we're looking for you know active uh, buyers of of the seals, harbor yeah. seals they're called. I like it. You see, trade is already happening right in front of us. Good mm -hmm. questions, Aki. Okay. Yeah, Xenia, we keep moving. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so for Pavlos, we have a question. Do you have any experience working through working with um, with Indigenous fur producers in the province of Quebec about government support? Is there anything you could speak to about that? Uh, Pavlos, your microphone. Please turn it on each time you speak. I try that because I do a lot of shows in the United States. And oh. let's see. Okay, we have Paula with us. Uh, maybe Paula can answer this question. Paula, I don't know if this is, uh, we didn't plan to speak, but Paula, if you wish. Okay. Paula, she said? Yeah, Paula knows a lot. Uh, uh, maybe we'll connect with you later regarding this uh, support, government support in Quebec. Okay, Xenia, yeah, please. So uh, for Leandra, do you have any insight for how Australian government provides support to Indigenous companies? Yeah, um, so I think uh, it goes kind of back to the traditional um, relationship uh, with Aboriginal culture, in particular, you know, First Nations culture. And I think that, you know, primarily that has support has been seen for art centers and artists, both in regional, urban and remote places across the country. That is, um, there is a, quite a lot of support for those, that industry and in Australia, um, it's kind of all blanketed, I guess, in as a creative, industry and um, within the fashion space. Now, I think in 2022, uh, we are seeing the government both um, on state levels and at a federal level, um, them kind of catching up and seeing that it is a space that more and more First Nations people are dominating in and, and going into um, as a kind of newer avenue, if you will, away from, you know, canvas art um, and using you know, fashion as a way to really, I suppose, continue to share those stories in a different medium. So um, it, it, to answer your question, yes, there is support, but there is not um, 
enough support and it is very limited and, and it changes and it is different from state to state as well as different sort of regional places that have um, support systems and, and bodies in place that can kind of um, act in that role. Um, uh, I think, um, sorry, and what was the other part of your question? Oh, that was, was that, oh, <laughs> did yeah. that about Indigenous, uh, sorry, about uh, government support for Indigenous artists? Yeah, I, I will just, I guess, say um, in terms of Indigenous business, there is uh, a lot more support in that space. So it's not necessarily primarily focused on the fashion industry, but there is um, great support, particularly state to state. Again, it's, it is a little bit different you know, in each place, but there are great support systems, both on a federal and state level um, for Indigenous business. And that is both uh, as, I mean, yeah, one avenue of that is seen through loans and um, grant funding opportunities, but uh, we also have great opportunities for, you know, workshops, upskilling and um, networking, but on a national, but also on an international capacity I think we you know we've got great relationships um, in America and, and in some other um, places around the world which I think though the primary focus there is a lot more in the sciences technology spaces and um, in those more I guess um, mathematical and innovative places um, that our government kind of sees that as a primary focus so um, yeah there is support but it's it's catching up <laughs> to what the demand is. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, Maxim, насколько важна государственная поддержка для Сахабулта, либо федеральная? Можно спросить, Марина, извиняюсь. Да. Максим, спрашивайте. Вот Австралию, там мы знаем, там есть Меринос, да, Акчина. Они связаны, могут так, ну, найти каналы или что, могут вообще этим заниматься или нет? Okay. Мы, конечно же, вас okay. свяжем с Леандрой, Максим. Леандра, uh, did you hear the question? Globe, you use Globe um, for translation, okay? You use it? Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, you I can try. Yeah. Максим, еще раз повторите вопрос быстренько Леандре, и она ответит. Овсами, uh, вот, Акчина есть? шкура овца, ну, овчины. Овцы. Овцы, да. И выделанный меринос, он австралийский считается такой самый качественный. Uh -huh. Для нашего. У нас очень холодно, поэтому мы пользуем овчину для подклада обуви. Хотелось бы узнать, есть отношение к этой продукции и могут ли они продать или там найти каналы или что-нибудь такое. Улиандры, да. Uh -huh. um, yeah, good question. And it, it's an interesting one too, because it kind of plays into um, the history of Australia in a way. Uh, sheep, although is one of our yeah, biggest exports, um, particularly in um, for the wool, obviously. <laughs> Um, but because it is an introduced animal um, and it, you know, came over, I guess, as we were colonized, it isn't something, it isn't an animal that um, First Nations people really tap into. However, in saying that, I would be more than happy to look within my network of people um, to see if there are, you know, if not First Nations, but other people that uh, trading in, you know, wool because I'll, you know, undoubtedly I'll be able to find a connection for you. Um, so I'd be happy to do a bit of digging and see if I can find a contact here in Australia for you. Very good. Okay. Yeah, Xenia. Yeah. Keep going. Thanks. Yeah, thank okay, you. thank you. Okay, thank you. Окей, повторим. Насколько важна государственная поддержка для Сахабулта, либо федерально, либо от республики Саха? Sorry, was that for me? No. 
Yeah, from Axim for Sacha Bolt. Axim, we switch the vapros. Maxim, your microphone. Я прослышал что там, и я ставил на перевод и прослышал. Хорошо, еще раз повторю. Насколько важна государственная поддержка для Сахабулта, либо федерально, либо от республики Саха? Поддержка есть. Как вы знаете, у нас очень холодно. И содержать 9000 квадратных метров здания – это очень сложно. Это у нас 9 месяцев холод, и надо постоянно отапливать эти помещения. Поэтому очень сложная инфраструктура, и все, поэтому без государственной поддержки, соответственно, мы просто не выживем. Поэтому и это, я до этого говорил, что это национальная компания. Ну, вот народ Саха тут проживал ну, тысячелетиями, и тут э, мы представляем э, местную нацию, да, и э, очень хорошо поддерживают, и эти продукции, которые мы выпускаем, она является еще э, таким э, нужным для э, местных населений, потому что до этого, как говорил, у нас может быть до минус 70 в некоторых районах отпускаться температура, поэтому теплая одежда просто необходима. Поэтому э, мы, если будем только с Китая покупать эти изделия, она может быть некачественная или будет ну, очень дорого, поэтому для э, поддержки таких производителей очень много программ существует. И у нас все равно рынок есть по этой направлении, и мы стараемся качественную и не очень дорогую продукцию делать для местного населения. Спасибо большое. Um, now I will be asking the rest of the companies uh, some panel questions. So for Crystal, can you speak to the future of the industry sustainability, reasons for increasing demand for slow fashion, how companies can innovate, and on your methods of lowering the carbon imprint of the industry? Sure. Um, this is this is so enlightening and it's um, very refreshing. Thank you. Um, a couple of things that we that we see happening, and I am involved in a lot of um, sustainable fashion collectives and um, different accelerated programs. One of the things that we see happening more and more, especially in the last, really since the pandemic started, I think as people have more time to actually, because of an existential crisis maybe, uh, think more about their choices. Um, there is a lot, uh, a greater movement for people to truly understand this, this story behind that. When I say that, I think about like, people really do want to know the process behind things. They want to be able to understand the why of the company. They, um, they want to be able to feel a connection to what they're buying and to uh, not only how that product is made and not just the people, but how it gets from uh, really the whole supply chain along the way. So uh, for us, one of the things that, that we have been doing to help answer that is to involve our customers more. Um, we're in e-commerce and we're, we have more agility maybe that way to be able to connect with our customers in that respect. But in particular, we do, um, we're involved in carbon offset programs um, that help us and our customers have peace of mind about how the shipping happens. And, and it ha it's, an in it's, um, it's calculated outside of us. It's an independent uh, program that we work with where we buy the offsets and everything from packaging to whatever and involving the customers in those, uh, in those choices. Uh, for us, we are a mid-level mid-range product and so we recognize that we are in a highly competitive space and we're not um the the differentiation for us is the ability and the opportunity to involve our customers in understanding truly the story behind the people that are involved in the making of the product and what that product represents thank you so much crystal for claudia 
can you speak speak more in depth about the sustainable development approaches implemented in your company and also can you, i think claudia is not with us huh she, she oh, didn't right. come, she, so she didn't come up okay I forgot. <laughs> Hello. Okay. okay. Right. So I think that's uh, that's that's it. If uh, Marina, if you have any conclusions that you wanted to you wanted to bring, if not, we can continue. I think we will move uh, on. Uh, just uh, thirty five minutes left before the ending, so we will try to speed up. And uh, for the panel three, you see, I would like to invite Mina Ailey, luxury retail specialist, to provide advice on uh, how Eurasian companies could uh, enter. North American retail chains. Mina, are you with us? Um, how are you? How's everybody doing this evening? Thank you, Mina. Thank you for joining us. I do speak Russian, so it's I, I feel like um, I can practice my Russian here, but I will stick with English. And you won't believe, you see, sometimes when you run events, especially like you got to know that the association is getting now into new industries, Somebody just brought Mina to me because I was looking. We always try to do well, business with diaspora. And all of a sudden, you see, I got to know you. So as you wish, <laughs> please, Mina. Um, so I, I manage a portfolio that I've built throughout um, my career in fashion and in the retail industry. So I have a $4 million portfolio that I manage. I create um, collections and wardrobes for my clients and um, very specific individuals. I have a very niche market. It's not designed for everybody. So I would say it's to the demographics of, you know, the ultra of luxury. So they commission me, I go in, I service them. I sort of build their whole aesthetics in their brand. I create a brand for individuals. And I deal with, um, fashion houses. I travel to Paris. I go to Italy. I buy small collections directly for the consumer that I service. And I deal with a lot of fur companies. Minx is something that is still quite um, popular and it is in demand. I, um, I know there is a big political and controversial conversations that go around this, but I am, uh, I believe that we have the freedom and the choices to do what we like. So I, I still outfit and wardrobe a lot of my clients in minks and furs, as do a lot of couture houses like Fendi, Dior, they still produce a big amount of um, fur in their collections. So for companies that are in Eastern European countries that have a phenomenal product and they see opportunity in the North American market, I, if I see an interest and I see that there is a niche for the market in the North American market, then I bring it in and I sort of market it and I develop it and I show it to private individuals. And then I sort of branch out. And if there's opportunity within retail stores, if, you know, I always say a product talks for itself, it sells for itself. And it goes behind, you know, the features and the benefits of it and how we market it and how we produce it. And it's almost like a story that has to be behind it. And everybody wants to buy a story, if that makes any sense. Wow. Yes, I think what uh, is becoming evident for our Russian participants that without marketing, it won't be easier to sell your products. You need to have your marketing department and develop your brand. Uh, Mina, is it correct? Well, you have to know definitely who your consumer base is and who, where you want your product, depending on the price point, depending on many factors and knowing who the consumer base is that we're going after. Okay. Very good. Uh, uh, let me introduce to you now Carol Lopez. Uh, this is the second time, in fact, we have uh, this chance to communicate with Carol. Okay, yeah, yeah, there are questions. Да, Максим, пожалуйста, для Мины вопрос. Марина. Да, да, пожалуйста, вопрос для Мины, пожалуйста. Мина, добрый вечер или очень добрый приятно? Добрый вечер. Ага. Хотели узнать, с Соболем вы работали, Соболь? У нас очень много Соболей. 
Russian stable, yes. Russian stable, uh huh. Yes. You put them uh -huh. Russian sable is probably one of the most luxurious furs that are out there. And it's it's not for everybody. And somebody has to understand the quality of it and understand the love for it. It's like having good wine. If you like good wine and you know what good wine tastes like, it's the same thing. But Russian sable is stunningly beautiful. And there is a consumer for it. And the beauty about this is the fact that in the climates that we, climate that we live in in Russia and in in Canada, we we have the ability to yes, we can. You know, if there is a, there is a stigma in the society around you know fur and all the regulations. But you know, we eat what we want, we wear what we want. So there is still a calling, and there's still a marketplace for it. Okay, very good. Uh, let me introduce to you Carol Lopez. So advisory board member of International Folk Art Markets in US in Santa Fe. And beside that, she is uh, an honorable council of Uzbekistan Republic. Uh, so you see, this is also uh, from our region where the association has a mandate. And let me introduce to you Carol. Carol, please tell us um, about the fair, the market, and we are specifically interested to know your advice on how to sell those uh, uh, art products uh, at a premium price. Any advice on that? I'd love to talk about that. Hello, uh, hello everyone. I'm here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I don't know if many of you have heard of Santa Fe, but we're a top uh, destination city in uh, in the United States. And I just wanna recognize Chief Jones. Good evening, Chief. Um, we hold the largest folk art market in the world. Uh, and by the largest folk art market that is juried, as an artist just cannot come and sell at our market. They have to apply the October before the July market, that many months ahead of time. Why does it take so long? Because we have to deal with visas. We have to deal with the shipping of goods. We have to deal with the creation of inventory. And that uh, Mina uh, talked about people want to buy things that have a story. Well, that's what we provide. Each year we have 130 artists, the very best master folk artists in the world. And by master, what I mean by that is people that have learned the traditions over hundreds of years. They know how to, whether it's making a carpet, ceramics, all kinds of fabrics, all of this is based on culture. We preserve culture. And let me tell you why. Grandma makes baskets, beautiful baskets. Kids aren't so interested in it. Yeah, grandma makes baskets. But grandma goes to the Santa Fe International Folk Art Market and her basket sells for $500. All of a sudden the grandkids are going, grandma, can you teach me that? And all of a sudden the grandma has her grandchildren sitting around her telling the traditional stories that go into making that item. And why does this matter? Because what Mina said, People want a story. We pay for the artists to come to the market their first time. And after that, they're supposed to have saved enough money to be able to go the second year. Many of our artists represent very large cooperatives. Uh, we have a very large uh, basket project from Rwanda that started following the genocide there where the women got together and would weave baskets and cry and just cry. And they kept weaving these baskets. And now by being able to sell them through markets like ours and expanding to small shops all over the world, there's a source of income. And people want to connect. You, it's amazing uh, if you study art, um, and I'm not an art historian, but I've had artists explain to me that there is this visual connection that happens right with your heart that connects you to an item, an art item, 
uh, it connects you to something handmade that somebody has created, that it, it's a very special feeling. And in, after many, many years, just like what Chief is showing, after many, many years of us all liking mass production, remember the coat of many colors, you know, the, the story, everybody wanted a store-bought coat, uh, but it was that handmade coat of many colors that really touched this person's heart. And I think we're going back to that, the desire to connect back to our roots, the desire to connect with other cultures and to hear the stories that you learn through art. So in fashion, we actually have major designers from all over the world come to our market just to look and see what's being made, just to look at the designs, to get a sense of, of the beauty and the different expressions of, of art and culture and, um, and people buy. Our average artist in the time that they're at our folk art market, because normally when it's not COVID, it's three days. We're doing it two weeks now because we have to reduce the number of people that can enter and buy their items. The average artist makes over $22,000 in a weekend. That's huge. That's a huge amount of money. And a lot of them are cooperatives. A lot of them, large cooperatives of people, uh, particularly women, to bring economic uh, vitality. Women can, can work in the home and maintain their duties, uh, you know, with taking care of their families. And they can do weaving. They can do carving. Um, we have... Um, tribes in um, West Africa that produce amazing silver jewelry. And they started out with maybe five artists. Now they're employing like 500 artists and everybody uh, is working and bringing these items to market. So that's just a little bit. We believe that what we do is we provide markets. We provide markets for artists and we preserve culture by providing these markets. Wow, yes. it's a beautiful message that you create a market, <laughs> even if it's, uh, it can be wiped out sometimes, but we believe in it, we create it and uh, we do it. Okay, thank you very much. I can ask something. Yes, Pavlos, I would like to invite you right now. So can Carol, you... Carol, yes. how yes. are you? Yes, Carlos. I'm an art artisan for 14 years in Quebec. I do the most multicolor uh, scarf in the world. I'm a number one in that. I never show you this, and I can show you one of them. It's Shield Beaver scarf. It's multicolor, both. You can wear it a man and a woman. Those ones I sell all those years and I stay in business. And created by Pavlos, all these years, 14 years, I start with that. I start with five scars and I used to sell 2000 scars a year. The COVID, he destroyed us, but still in business. Yeah. And I'm very interested to come to show, to show to the, down there where you are in, uh, and the art, I can be a, a part of your uh, shows there. Well, if you go to our website, um, mm -hmm. uh, and it's just uh, folkartmarket.org. Yes. Folk Market. Pavlos, I will provide you all the contacts, okay. right? Thank you. Events, I will send Thank you, you very people. much. I wish you the best. Yes, all the contacts, all you see, we won't lose time Hello. on that for sure. Hello, okay, can I ask you? Hello. Yes, Maxim. Maxim, please. Can I ask you? Yeah, Maxim, пожалуйста. Uh, у нас есть uh, изделие из костей мамонта. Uh, интересно, в вашем этом рынке это или нет? Есть вот традиция в костях? Uh, only if, uh, only if you can see it. 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 
it would have to be that the ivory is um, is part of um, folk art expression. For example, I know we had uh, native artists at one time. Uh, I'm not exactly sure in the Pacific corridor that did beautiful work on ivory, on ivory carving, uh, traditional stories that were actually uh, carved into the ivory. It would have to be based in a, a, a someone's cultural tradition versus just, oh, uh, ivory is a beautiful medium. If that it, answer makes sense, I hope. Okay. Я хочу сказать, что у нас есть тоже традиция есть, и вот это, извиняюсь за качество, не передает ощущение, да, вот этой красоты, но у нас есть традиция тоже, издревле занимались, это тоже является нашей культурной ценностью. Старезный промыс у нас существует, и у нас очень много мастеров, then, и then это that... наша тоже часть. Окей. Uh, okay. Максим, uh, сколько вы еще можете остаться времени? Uh, я бы хотела вам несколько вопросов задать для канадских компаний, пока вы с нами. Могу сейчас, перед тем, как вы уходите? Максим? Несколько вопросов. Uh, перед тем, как вы уйдете, я знаю, если вас вызовут uh, на совещание. Mm -hmm. Окей, okay. какой совет вы бы могли дать канадским компаниям вот, в сотрудничестве по нашей теме? Где вы видите возможности для сотрудничества? Вот компании, которые здесь представлены и вообще по всем направлениям. Скажите сейчас, пожалуйста, чтобы мы это не потеряли для них. Ага. Ну, очень интересно, конечно, все интересны. И вот, например, вот Мина Элли тоже заинтересовался по роскоши, да, именно по свободу. И Паулос очень тоже интересно. Мы видим, что он делает то, что нашу продукцию, и мы хотели бы как-то взаимодействовать в отношении передать, ну, покупки у нас этих шкур или у них каких-то нибудь изделий, ну, и на то есть и пошло. И я хотел еще, Марина, вот я не вижу по оленьим шкурам, там вот показывал же камуса вот эти вот. Мы вот тогда был охотник, да, или кто там, который интерьеры шкуры только делает, а там вот часть ноги выкидываете. Или что-то с ним делает, да, но мы их могли бы приобретать и делать наши национальные эти обувь. Вот эта национальная обувь, она полностью из оленьих лапок. Видите, да, лапки. Шиты. Тут ушло 10, 12 лап. 12 лап. И э, тут все в национальном орнаменте. Это все у нас покупается. И минус 50-70 это у нас комфортно на них ходить. Поэтому очень нужно так, такой мех. Если есть у кого-то такой мех, то, пожалуйста, мы могли бы приобрести. Uh -huh. И по другим мехам вы говорили, это может быть что? Рысь, это uh -huh. может быть бобер? Бобер, рысь, очень интересно. Цены интересны. Я знаю, качество канадских меха очень хорошее. Мы сталкивались, работали с таким мехом, но через посредников покупали. Хотелось бы напрямую, чтобы цена была, была более такой нормальной. Да, с дизайнерами, вот как Паулос. Да, и... да Паулос, он да, очень такой да, мощный я... человек, очень понравилось его изделие. То, что он традиционно занимается уже сколько лет этими изделиями. Мы вообще думали, что в Канаде не не актуальны меха, но понимаете, сейчас политика такая, что, но я думаю, что обратно придет такая политика, что, потому что мех, он а, быстро разлагается и он не оставляет после себя никаких отходов. И поэтому надо на это, конечно, акцентировать, 
И то, что вот искусственный мир сделан, он разлагается сто лет. Это для его переработки тоже стоит очень много денег. И последний вопрос, Максим. Я краем уха слышала из сети интернет, что вы рассматриваете возможность создания кластера в Якутии. Могли ли бы мы такую инициативу вместе с ассоциацией запустить и сделать ваш кластер международным с участием Канады? Смотрите, у вас есть Соединенные Штаты, у вас есть каналы сбыта. Мы бы... Пожалуйста, чуть-чуть мы... насчет кластера расскажу на двух словах. Ну, наше правительство поддерживает это направление, и это кластер мы понимаем как кооператив, потому что у нас не только мы, и мелких организаций очень много, которые занимаются легкой промышленностью, тканями, кожей, мехом. И поэтому хотелось бы в одном ЕГИДе Сухоболта понимать эти организации. Хорошо, как продолжение, мы хотим познакомиться со всеми вашими участниками кластера и добавить вот те, кто у нас есть сегодня, и построить это на, на поток, так скажем, потому что самый все равно большой сбыт мехов и технологий – это Евразия. Я не знаю, так мне говорил Павлос, вот, но мы, мы будем вам делать предложение. Марина, okay? yeah. can I just say something quickly? Yes, yes please, Marina. Okay, so... You know, I wrote an article about the fur industry because I'm very passionate about it. And I still think that there is a demand. And I think we've been kind of so with society putting so much pressure in this industry that we're, you know, we're a little afraid to touch it and to talk about it. So I actually, if it's possible, I, I, it was published and it's on the Retail Insider. I like to send it to everybody so they can actually read it for a different perspective. Yes, Mina. Besides that, let's place it in our blog. We have now a, a, a website for this blog and a website for this project. So everybody who would like to share some advice with companies, you are very welcome. Okay, so any thank you so much. It was a very interesting okay. panel. Thank you. And okay, you can send it to us. Okay, it's good. good. It's good, good to know good. about the, what you write. I would oh, like to. Yeah. yeah, we are forgetting now Crystal and Calvin. Crystal, uh, you see with your very good sustainable project. So sh please share with us your advice on marketing in North America, maybe, uh, if you can, because we still didn't cover this question. And how turning into a sustainable business model helped you to increase your sales? Do you see it and what maybe tricks you use, if you can share? Yeah, sure. Um, I. I fully agree with what Mina said earlier, that um, I think that every company here is, um, we're, we came to this from a sustainable perspective, but we can be so inside of our industry, we can be so inside of the, under, we're so um, intimately acquainted with how our things are made, the processes, that we can lose sight of the fact that people on the outside don't know And so when I, when marketing, I always think about things that are obvious to me, but if, if that I can't make assumptions that those are obvious to other people. So issue things around sustainability, for example, I learned a lot here, just sitting here, listening to people um, talk about the fur industry itself. I, I learned a lot about the sustainability behind it, around the stories, around the why, in particular around the Indigenous connections. Those things are not things that are, people are talking about. And in North American, in the North American market in particular, um, we are becoming more and more interested and fascinated with understanding the story behind things. And storytelling can be very simple. So we've done that through our social media. It can be done with images, but in particular, it really needs to be done in very simple, bite-sized, um, palatable amounts of information for consumers to understand and to for them to develop uh, a love for it and to an, an appreciation of what's going on behind the scenes. Great advice. Thank you very much. I'm getting back now to Calvin and the Roy. Roy, your advice on marketing sustainable products in North America, and I know you also export a lot. Calvin and Roy, could you please speak um, about marketing in your company? What are you doing for that? Yeah. Um, Calvin, Calvin's uh, doing the, a lot of the export and uh, goes to China, but the multiple problems that we have with uh, 
NGOs is just unreal. And we did research back in the day where we figured about 7% of, in the US, 7% uh, of the people contributed. And that's a little high, but at the same time, that's not a problem for them to generate uh, $393 million. And that's what keeps companies or organizations like PETA uh, going like that. And I've had challenges from the David Suzuki Foundation, uh, PETA and other organizations. And one of the things that I use when they talk about sustainability and especially where the seal and sea line are, our uh, issue on the West Coast here where, where we live through the, I'll say the Eastern Pacific and all the way from Alaska down to California and even beyond that. Um, we're protecting, we got laws that protect one species over another and it, that's a big one right there. And it can no longer continue. I bring this up in the talk shows all the time and I, I, I always tell the uh, environmental people that are the animal rights people, you got a responsibility to nature and a lot of them will head for the bush right away. But at the end of the day too, they, they, they seem to have that powerful fundraising that, that really makes it challenging for the fur industry. And the other thing that we use a lot when I do my talk shows, I take, just take Gore-Tex for, for one of the materials that a lot of the stuff are made out of today. And it's got a deterioration rate of something like 300 years where furs 60, 80 years, it starts to fall apart if it's not looked after. Um, we're, we've seen a big change in our community where my dad was a trap line holder and him and his brothers used to go trapping all winter long. And they brought seafood into the community and uh, Papa's Furs was the per fur company at the time. Those guys all came over and bought the furs and out of our community pretty much like Kelvin does with his uh, corporation. Uh, these things are ongoing now and uh, I'm 70 now and I'm really working hard to try to get our people back into the into this fur industry because that's one I grew up in and it paid all the expenses plus the big bond benefit of that was it brought fresh food from the land back into our community. Uh, the other thing about the seal, I believe of every human being in any country took seal oil, you know, would be looking at a 40% reduction in health cost. And I've been invited to Australia to do uh, talks, but I can never afford to get down there, number one, at the Indigenous World Health Conference in Northern Australia. And number two, when I did have the funds to get down there, COVID came down along and shut everything down. So, you know, the fight goes on and uh, we'll always have that fight, but we have to take on metropolitan world. They got no business trying to manage nature. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Kelvin, uh, your initiative, great initiative to run master classes. I think it's a marketing approach. Do you see it like that? Can you expand a little bit on your? Say uh, that again. The master okay, your, your classes, educational classes that you are running. Oh, and yes, yes, uh, is sure. coming. yes. Isn't it a marketing tool for you? And how we can expand on this, this initiative? Is it to use it for collaboration between sustainable companies that are sure. right here? Sure. So, I mean, one of the problems that the fur industry has had for, for a long time is that. We didn't educate people. We didn't uh, educate the consumer. We didn't educate the public. We didn't educate ourselves. I mean, uh, we didn't train people to become furriers and, and assistant furriers and so on. We, we forgot to do that and we lost that touch. So our program is, our, we have two programs, a five day and a 10 day program workshops. And we're teaching people how to sew, cut, um, design, match, grade furs. And um, in that, in those short, uh, days and they're long days, by the way. And and Panos, uh, our senior furrier from Greece, he's the fellow who's teaching it. Um, but we're teaching in students, one Canadian at a time, what fur is all about and why is it sustainable and how is it sustainable. And th this is the only way we're going to win the fur industry back. Um, 
uh, back within Canadians themselves. Um, we've got enough of our own problems in Canada. We don't want to have to start fighting the, the antis and other organizations in other countries. We have our own problems here, but that's what we have to do. We have to educate people. We have to have for more programs like this happening across the country. And um, so that's what's all about. With sustainability also comes education, and that's what we're big on. Okay, Karen, how about recording your master classes? Putting those pieces, recording, how about recording your classes that you are giving and putting all that uh, on the well, website? We, sure, <laughs> sure. We, uh, we, we're going to be doing that. Now the, our March classes are filling up. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Panos, or the, the teacher, he, we have, he has a course in uh, Inuvik Northwest Territories uh, uh, next week, as a matter of fact. So the government of the Northwest Territories contracted us to teach a, a school program up there and they have 10 students coming. So they've set, set up a permanent classroom in Inuvik. And uh, so they may call us, uh, you know, another two, three times a year to teach these courses. Um, but this is what it has to take. This is these programs, these educational programs. Um, and it doesn't matter what it is. We're not teaching them how to make a garment or, or a blanket or whatever, anything, a keychain, anything, a little bit, a piece of fur, but that they can take home with them at the end of the program, show their friends, show their family, sell it, whatever they want. A lot of the students are trappers themselves. Fur prices are low, so they want to do something with the fur. Um, other than just sell it or not sell it at the fur auction or, or fur buyer or whatever. They want to do something with it. And this is the only way we can teach our fellow Canadian citizens uh, about fur and the sustainability of it. And that being an honest fabric is we have to teach them they have, they, because they, they don't know. And it's not like, you know, nope. they don't know because nobody's told them anything about it. You know what is the problem? The bigger problem is because I'm a courier from the 77, I teach 1,000 people in Montreal, the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, 1,000 people, how to cut, how to sew, and how's everything. And today, he doesn't left one person to come to work, even inside to the store, even inside to the factory, nobody. And the problem is, Nobody advertising fur in the TV. That's a big problem. And the problem is from the government. The government today, it's the bigger fault. It's the government, nobody else. The, cover, the government has to say, you have, he can McDonald's to stop to produce cars, plastic cars to give to the kids and us leaving uh, Canada goods to sell uh, fake fur. That's a that's a killing. Yes, this is fabulous. the fall of the government. He doesn't look what he's selling to the women. Okay, Pablo. Yeah. The next thing we do, we have internet. That's my problem. Yeah. I have the store now for fifteen years here. People, he begged me. He bring coats here, sixty five years. Where you can find the sixty five years coat, whatever you are wearing. The problem. The other problem is. All the plastic it's coming from China and the government it doesn't step in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the bigger problem. And the Chinese buy our product, the natural product, and nobody say nothing. Yes. And I fight with the customers. Pavas, mm -hmm. can I suggest something? Okay, because to promote products, we need content. So let's record your master classes. Let's create a website and use it in promotion purposes. And you will be selling right after. So how Bolt can join this initiative and also for Canada and Pavlas. Do we have I something create, similar I mean, in, in Canada? Sure. I mean, the, the, there's lots of blame to go around, but the bottom line is it's the fur industry's fault. That this, this has happened. We brought it on ourselves. We stopped educating people ourselves. We stopped teaching people how to work with fur and understand fur and being, and being, it being sustainable. That is happening, that is starting all over because as uh, Carol said earlier, you know, the consumer wants to see a story behind it. So we have a story to tell and we want to tell it. Thank you, Mr. Calvin. Okay. That's true. You Thank see, you. now we have five minutes left, I think, before we go into networking sessions. Let's speak, short, let's speak shortly about international business. I would like to call Nazi Panahi, who would give us advice uh, about regulations, so customs, export, import, import processes, logistics, Marina. 
Окей, Максим, you have a question. Максим, вопрос. Марина. Да? Да. Я извиняюсь, очень интересно и благодарю всем участникам, да, но мне надо ехать, и вот у меня мой помощник Николай останется, и все будет модерировать. То, что вот связано мехом, очень, вот то, что до этого говорили, это очень важно, потому что надо с покупателем разговаривать и, и говорить, что натуральный мех – это не хорошо, а хорошо наоборот, что он является, не, не губит природу, а наоборот она поддерживает, потому что численность животных надо регулировать. Если этого не делать, то животные сами могут исчезнуть. Вот это надо людям как-то донести. Например, вот соболь у нас появился, и другие животные исчезли из-за него. Какие так горностай, ласка, белка, он истребляет всех. И если мы его не будем регулировать, то он всех может истребить. Спасибо. Замечательно. Мы не говорим до свидания, это только начало нашего разговора, Максим. Окей. Нази, Нази, what do you like? Please, sir, to give us an advice on international business development, specifically trade between Canada and Eurasia, some logistics routes and procedures. Daisy, are you with us? Yes, I am. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, okay, interesting discussions. Um, uh, I'm not really into fashion, but honestly, right now I'm so interested. <laughs> So thank you for the invitation. Um, as for the transportation and uh, transporting and shipping uh, these shipments, um, I will be able to help uh, if I, I'm sure you, ha you have your own people, but if there is any questions, anything, I promise that I'm gonna help. Nah, nah. I have I checked there is a, a CETA so that's the free trade agreement between Canada and, the, and Europe but um, uh, Ukraine is not part of that but there is a free trade agreement between Canada and Ukraine uh, so it's called CUFTA uh and it's uh really helping so if anything uh, once uh, like anything comes from ukraine to canada uh is like anything that comes from the us so um duty free and only um gsc is applied um so that's something um for this and also uh right now um for um For big um, clothing and uh, and uh, footwear um, importers, what we do, we apply for advanced rolling for them. And uh, that's something that is really important because mostly uh, the products that uh, you guys are selling or you're importing uh, or uh, Canadians are exporting these, they're, they're very high value and, um, and the importers, they need to have Um, they need to pay a big amount uh, as duty and tax. Uh, so um, um, this is, there's something that we call it advanced ruling. So that's something that I can help your customers or you if you need. That's uh, help and that is help with um, duty and tax. Uh, other than that, uh, with the shipping, um, be, uh, there are lots of um, white gloves um, um, ship, shippings that um, uh, they're offered by different shipping lines, uh, steam shipping lines and airlines. So these are also something that we can help. Um, yeah, I'm here. If there's any specific questions, please feel free. Uh, just send it over to me. Um, if it require any one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I'm I'm available. Okay, uh, I think we covered you see quickly all other panels. And uh, before closing, is there anybody who would like to contribute to the discussions and make proposals, in clear general. ones to each in other, general. or in general between the countries, how we can work with Uzbekistan? We see also very big Eurasian country that. Uh, 
we may bring people you hear if you are lacking for talents for those uh, who can uh, finish your products we have uzbekistan we have ukraine we have belarus plenty of women who are it's in their tradition family traditions to do those things uh, so any remarks or uh, proposals for collaboration is now a good question a good time yeah i can i can i have yes, a, please, please. A, a one minute uh, so my name is mietka jemba and i'm export advisor working in the province of bc and i i know chief roy jones and hello to him. But um, I would like to uh, comment or have a few comments to Leandra. Uh, Leandra, we have a specially designed um, and assignated uh, expert advisor to work with um, First Nations. I'd be very happy to connect with you. And with Crystal, um, I haven't done any work with uh, sustainable fashion, but um, I'm an expert advisor and I, this is my personal interest. I did quite a bit of research on, in, on sustainable fashion incubators in London, UK, and also some other sort of um, places uh, working on uh, sustainable fashion. So if you are interested in them, I'm happy to uh, connect. And if um, my area of expertise is European Union, mainly um, from Poland originally, and um, I, I do um, work with uh, exporters interested in, uh, in the US as well as under Kuzma. I have the general knowledge, but I haven't worked that much with the US. But very much interested in, in being part of it and, and helping whatever I can. So thank you. Mietka, you are welcome also to place your uh, post or your article on our website. Okay. Any advice for Canadian Eurasian companies? We are looking forward to collaborating with you. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. We have Sivinj from Uzbekistan. Sivinj, do you want to speak? This is a young, uh, passionate, uh, you see Uzbek assistant in my team. So she wants to say something. Please. Hi everyone, my name is Sivinj. Uh, as Marina said, I'm from Uzbekistan. Um, I live currently in, uh, in Canada, so I was very interested uh, of companies collaborating with my native country. Um, uh, we have some, you were talking about a lot of about history and uh, people making stuff with their own hands. And uh, in our culture, we have a lot of that. Mainly our cu culture are, are based on that. Um, we also uh, pass some, some history, some traditional stuff uh, by, um, uh, to our kids. And not everybody knows those skills. Um, I, would, I have some pictures to share. It's still two pictures, if it's yes, okay. Yes, please. Just, um, go, go forward. If you can uh, give me access. Uh, we have we we work a lot about with uh, with ceramics. My country is very popular uh, working with ceramics and with. Um, it's carpet. not working. It's not working okay. now. You cannot you cannot share. I I did uh, rise. Oh yeah, I can share. Okay, thank you. Um. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. Well, I. Svinchen, your husband is not with us. No, it's um, an important it's, uh, person because he owns distributors, uh, distribution stores in Moscow and in yes. uh, uh, um, Uzbekistan we'll somewhere in uh, the city. So we yeah, will be we'll connected also, with him as well. My husband has a, has a store in Moscow. Um, they already uh, work with the, with the fashion, but more in um, with men, men fashion. Um, as uh, like uh, clothings uh they they sell that and currently there was a business idea between uh, uzbekistan and turkey we'll, we will be probably importing from turkey to uzbekistan some uh, um uh clothings um the the pictures that i wanted to show uh, to those who might be interested this is the ceramics that we uh can you can you see yeah we do see um i'm not sure oh yeah here, um, so this is the kind of a ceramics that we use. Uh, the drawings that you see, they have, they all have uh, some uh, meaning. Um, they have a story between, uh, like uh, behind these uh, these drawings, some flowers that can uh, that that means uh, something else. 
Um, and those drawings are of course made by hand. One by one, they were drawn by, uh, by people. You can find them in the Samarkand, uh, Bukhara, all those places. Um, so if you, if there is people yes, who are- Yes, we will interested. be doing that. We will be promoting them. Uh, yeah, um, I am flying to Uzbekistan uh, in April. So if I can uh, help you with that, I will be I'll be glad. Um, uh, with the carpets that I was talking, it's it's this one. Um, this is also very like we have uh, multiple styles. Um, each region region in my country they have their own drawings. They have their own mo motif, and they also uh, have a significant signification. Um, for example, for this one, they they might have a. I, I'm not I'm not an expert, but they have their own uh, signification. Um, so uh, that might be interesting for for the for the stores that that work with tissues and ceramics. Um, let me know. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Very good. <laughs> I, I, I am moving forward. Okay. Yes. Uh, so anybody, let's now. It's time to pass your message. What you would like to see next? Everybody, we see of the six manufacturers, and uh, if there are any other comments. Maybe Valery Ivanovich, I see he turned on his video. Valery Ivanovich, would you like to start to give uh, next steps, to suggest next steps? Yes, thank you very much, Marina. First of all, I would like to thank Serba and uh, particular Marina uh, for your continuous efforts to establish direct connections between our entrepreneurs in our countries. And uh, of course, um, uh, as a Russian trade mission here in Canada, we will be uh, ready to, and will be glad to work with my native uh, region company, Sakhabult. I'm very glad to see Nikolai, my old friend. <laughs> he's, still, yeah. he's still young. <laughs> Good. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and uh, we очень, are, очень uh, рад вас uh, And we, uh, I hope that um, Sahabul uh, will be ready to work with um, Canadian and uh, American companies in order to uh, establish direct connections uh, and to trade with the companies. Definitely, we understand that there are certain possibilities for the company to export uh, to the Northern America. And of course, um, uh, Canadian companies could be uh, good partners, could find a good partner um, in Russia using Zahabult because Zahabult is one of the I would say unique companies in Russia with very unique produ uh, production and um, uh, based on the culture of the uh, Yakutian people and uh, indigenous people uh, of the Republic of Saha Yakutia. I'm also representing indigenous people uh, of the Russian Federation. I'm, uh, from the Republic of Saha Yakutia, and I know a lot about this uh, beautiful uh, region, and I would be uh, happy to uh, help uh, the region to promote uh, uh, business here in Canada. Thank you very much. Valery Ivanovich, you have specific ideas for the association as a next step. Is yeah. We spoke? Yes, definitely we should consider um, the Hubble's um, export to Canada and to the United States as a unique or handcrafted uh, uh, production. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, they could uh, provide very unique fare to the uh, Canadian and North American uh, markets. And uh, I was very pleased to uh, hear um, very good ideas from the previous speakers uh, during the, uh, this session. So thank you very much for your um, uh, proposals. And I think with help, with, uh, with Marina's help, we will be able to continue our collaboration with the Canadian companies. 
Thank, Thank you. you very much, Valeria Ivanovich. My pleasure, and we'll try to do all my best. Okay, and manufacturers, please, each of you, any proposal before we will be connecting you with the stores, as promised, we will be doing that. And besides, let me, I think, mention it now, Association did uh, launch a new project for small and medium businesses, and we call it Virtual Trade Fair, Serba Virtual Trade Fair. We invite you to place your profiles on our uh, portal, uh, any piece of content, any masterclass you record, we are inviting you to share with us. And on our website, we will, we will be connecting you with stores. And look, we have a network of consultants, logistics companies, marketing specialists who will be helping you, advising you. Okay, so this is shortly. And any manufacturer, please, your message, how you would like to collaborate uh, with Russia or backwards Russia with Canada. Maybe we can... Yeah. Before anybody speaks, I just think it would be really sad if I didn't uh, mention okay. this interesting statistic that I came across. So Indigenous people comprise about 5% of the world's population, but they're stewards of about 80% of the world's biodiversity. So in their hands, there's a lot of potential for Taking uh, great message for climate change. So anyway, just just to leave with that. <laughs> yes, eighty percent uh, in your hands, sir. Huh? Thank you, Marina. Thank okay. you very much. Yes, Pablo. You your everybody. suggestion. Yeah, or, or we are finishing. Would you like to clear message or how you would like to help or continue? That's all. Maybe for today. Each manufacturer, it's important moment. Guide us. What would you like to? sell or buy from Russia, from other partners, how you would like to collaborate? I would like to uh, yes. continue communicating with them. And we would like to buy some uh, some certain items, sable, Russian sable is one uh, from Russia. We'd like to sell them some seal skins and um, we'd like to continue communication. But we'd also like to have, and I think I sent you a, a chat or to everybody in the group, that some high level indigenous first nations should uh, should get together and gather and have a meeting and discuss for from both countries. Good advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, Leandra, uh, I don't know if she's still with us, our Austra Australian company. Leandra, would um, you? Yeah, yeah uh, we are definitely interested in um, just expanding into the international market we already sell internationally primarily in north america and in canada actually um then next would be into the uk um so i'm you know and that is with actually little effort um but i yeah i would be very interested to um kind of explore what opportunities there are to to tap into more of an international presence um, I've been to Vancouver and I, it was a beautiful city, reminded me very much of Sydney. Um, so it was very cold and I've learned a lot from the discussions here, particularly around um, fur and the production of it and really the ethical practices and, you know, the passing down of culture through fur and, and how that's been translated into the fashion industry. So very fascinating thank you so much for having me a part of um the discussion and would love to yeah um understand and explore any um department opportunities with department stores and the like thank you thank you leandra crystal crystal there is a raw market for you in russia crystal are you still with us crystal probably left Okay, because that was too long. Uh, Sahabul, maybe. And Nikolai. Nikolai, your microphone. Uh, Marina, еще раз yeah. добрый день. Okay. Хотел бы вас поблагодарить за организацию такого очень интересного диалога, поскольку мы даже вплоть до Австралии видели коллег, которые занимаются именно этим направлением как наша компания Сахабул. Спасибо, что вы дали возможность увидеть Валерия Ивановича Максимова, с которым я лично знаком и лет 10 не видел. Благодаря этой встрече мы увидели друг друга визуально. Значит, для нас очень интересно. Мы понимаем, что у нас еще будет ряд встреч. Я всем очень благодарен. 
Значит, мы для себя отметили значит, тех контрагентов, потенциальных партнеров, потенциальных, с которыми могли бы построить ну, дальнейший диалог. Очень интересно, Нина, Рой, Паулас, вот именно тот примерный круг контрагентов, с которым нам хотелось бы уже более углубленно и более так уже перейти на язык бизнеса, проговорить и уже выйти на какие-то конкретные договоренности в части поставки к вам в Канаду и, соответственно, импорта из Канады, из Якутии, из сырья. Вот наш генеральный директор обозначил основные направления в плане экспорта по видам сырья. И мы готовы уже в ряде наших последующих встреч уже детализировать и выйти уже на какие-то определенные договоренности. Еще раз спасибо организаторам, всем участникам. Это очень самобытные люди, которые участвовали. Мы надеемся на, наше, на дальнейшее сотрудничество и взаимодействие. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to see Roy? Yeah, um, one of the things I want to let the participants know in here is on the East Coast of Canada, they have the annual seal hunt and uh, the harvest numbers are way down. So if you want to order seal from Canada that we can get from the East Coast, and mind you, they're getting the beaters, they're the smaller seal. Um, your orders have to go in now. Um, you know, uh, if, if you put in an order now, it, it'll, it'll be ready. Uh, they'll just add it to their, their harvest because um, they're only harvesting roughly about, I think maybe, 15 or 20 percent of the quota that they're there and the seal populations on the east coast and the west coast are totally out of control so you know we could facilitate that working with anybody that wants to contact us and uh please share my email a number of you guys got my emails now and uh, if you need any help just contact me at uh, kelvin thank you Yes, right after the event, uh, maybe tonight or maximum tomorrow morning, I will send all the contacts to the participants. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to see? We have Ukraine with us. I don't know if they're still with us. Um, you heard a little bit about Uzbekistan. Can I ask a question about Ukraine? Did, did the lady there from Ukraine say that we have a free trade agreement with Ukraine, Canada? Yes, that's okay. correct. That's correct. But not Russia or Kazakhstan, no. Yeah, we, we have a big interest also to collaborate with Ukraine. Okay, then as a next step for sure, you see we didn't make it very much with the, the, the stores and we will be working on the next meeting with the stores. I sent you a list. You remember you received my emails, so we are speaking to them. You can check uh, what store is uh, specifically of interest to you, and we will call them. We think that the next uh, re like logical step could be for stores to speak and explain their policies, how you can deal with them. Only stores. Okay, so I think uh, we are done for, for tonight. You have all the contacts, emails, and uh, we will be writing to you. Okay. Thank you, Marina. Thank you, Marina. Okay, thank you Good very much. to everybody. Well, thank you. Job well done. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Good luck to everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.